So I was asked to look at the data from the Pulse survey from the CDC, which looks at COVID and long COVID. It's a household survey. And I just need to say, this is the ugliest data I have looked at in a good while. Like who decided that this was an appropriate way to organize things? Luckily, they have um, some options to visualize the data through the CDC website. So if I take you over to my browser, this is a visualization of people who've ever experienced long COVID as a percentage of adults who've ever had COVID. And then I can separate it by group. but I'm pretty annoyed that the way that they have these data set up make it really difficult for me to do this on my own. Not impossible, like I'll get it done. But um, let's just say I did not give myself the amount of time that it is going to take to do this on my own without using the CDC's little options here. And also these are <laughs> really, really bad. Um, as a percentage of, of adults who have ever had COVID already was not great that it was like, look, if I go to the national estimates ungrouped, we're over 20, which the reason I was asked to look at these is because, um, one of the people that I work with noticed that there was this dip that hadn't gotten here yet. They noticed that it looked like it was decreasing. They were like, isn't that great? And when I had initially looked at it, I was like, well, no, I don't think that that's great because it's still way over 20%. And now it looks like it's just increased again anyways. But when you break it down by subgroup, especially, so just again, looking at disability, it's like over 40% of disabled people who have ever had COVID. are reporting that they have experienced long COVID. We can look at age group. This is where it really gets a little bit scary because a lot of the memory has been, oh, well, it's just disabled and or old people. Okay, old people, 80 years and above, is this brown point. And the 70 to 79 years is this yellow line here. You can see that among adults, those are actually the lowest percentage in terms of age cohort, people who <laughs> experience long COVID and are also working for health um, Way up here at the top, we have 40 to 49 year olds. And 50 to 59 year olds. What is not down all the way at the bottom is this 18 to 29 year old category, which should be the youngest and supposedly the healthiest adults. And you can see the thing out here in the middle. And also, it's about 25%. More women than men. It looks like this is dark and more than men. It's quite so multiracial, non Hispanic. It looks like it's the highest people who can try to qualify. Lowest percentage of them for me appears to be. Um, it 
group of the highest education has gone to have the lowest reporting rate that's been seen. But again, this is still not a great rate. Um, so right now it's looking, yeah, definitely like 20% or more of the adult population in the U.S. who has had COVID is is experiencing or has ever experienced long COVID. So yeah, I guess I will have to report to my colleague that one, these data are really ugly, really <laughs> We really couldn't get very far other than using the CDC's own tools. So I'll have to look at that further when I have more time. Um, but also that even without running any analyses to see if these changes are significant or anything like that, um, just on face, these levels are still really, really high. Um, in fact, it's it's over 25 percent not just over 20 so yeah this is really not great not good news and yeah despite this decrease in late 2023 it looks like we're back up near 30 percent for 2024 so i would not say that this decrease is as promising as unfortunately my colleague had hoped so i just wanted to share this with you because i haven't gone over data in a really long time and also because i just really needed to rant about how awful the organization of this data set is um thank you to whoever is in charge of cleaning the data at the CDC, you have done really not a fantastic job. And yes, I am judging you. I'm judging you hard. That's all for today, folks.